folks we are here in Vermont for day two and this is the town of Stowe it is one of the top 10 small towns to live in in America what we're gonna do today is we are going to go down into Stowe we're gonna show you everything down there cuz it's really cute little town and then we're gonna take the back roads of Vermont we don't know where we'll end up today but we are pointing our car in the direction of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. another state we have never been in. Dawn, are you ready? Ready, let's do it. Let's do this. Definitely like a mountain resort. So we're checking into the Caddy Hill Lodge by Bluebird. And it's kind of an outdoorsy type lodge. Looks like they have mountain biking trails and hiking trails in the area. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And they got this really cozy room here that I guess during the winter months you can you can keep warm and it's kind of like a ski resort, but we are in like ski country. That is awesome. I also have a little game room. Oh, I got a South Park pinball, Dawn. <laughs> so they went to check on the room to make sure it was ready. And, uh, Look at the toilet. Oh, Look yeah. The corner, what was that? Mr. Christmas Poop or something, right? What, Mr. Hey, Hanky. Christmas Oh. oh, you got oh, Kenny. <laughs> you killed Kenny. <laughs> oh, oh he came out the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're pretty good, Don. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's a crazy game, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a very, very comfy little place. Check out these crazy chairs. Wow, those are like the most comfy chairs I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, it's really soft. Our room number is 108. Oh, so it's absolute beautiful resort here. They have plenty of firewood. And they have a fire pit. And this is what I thought Vermont would be like. That's the lodge over there. And they have a nice little fire pit. And they got that smell of campfire in the air. Later on tonight, we'll sit down there and enjoy a little, little campfire. Oh, it's a nice little lodge. We're in room 108. 108. You know what the disturb sign says? Nowhere to be in. This is our room. Wow. What What are you thinking? I'm shocked. I, I like the seat bench area. Yeah, so you got a nice little area where you can sit around and the I. King size bed. Yeah. I could do some editing yeah. there tonight. And the king size bed. Oh, wow, that bed looks super, super soft. And it smells like wood in here. It smells like, uh, like a cabin. To but me it smells like peaches. Peaches? Yeah, I smell peaches. I smell like hardwood is what hardwood. I'm smelling. Yes. And we got ourselves, a, it looks like a, about a 40-inch TV. A little bit of in-room coffee. Just love the woodwork. What do you think about this woodwork? I like it. Yeah. I want to show the full-length mirror. It's got the... Um, the cushion couch is on it. Yeah. Oh, wow, yes. That's it's very, very nice. So you feel like you're in Vermont here, right? This is what you come here for. And then you got these little decorations up here. <laughs> like little birch. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
and they got these really like different lights here. Look like they're they're pots, like maybe they're made locally. So you got the microwave and a refrigerator. Soap and lotion. Oh. And then we got those nice big long showers. Oh, wow. So I have. Looks like a nice one. I believe that this place has been all redone. Yeah. I could just tell by. I can smell drywall. It's been fully. Got your towels. Got your towels. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're, they're nice and soft. And of course, uh, the commode, right? Oh, wow. Very, very nice. The tiling in the bathroom is nice. And it's hardwood floors throughout, so you don't have to worry about carpeting. There is a rug underneath the, the bed here. We're in this little town called Stowe. And uh, it's a cute little town. I think we're going to have a good night here. Boy, that bed looks... Like it's the most comfiest bed I've seen. The mattress is like super thick. The sheets look just awesome all the way through. It is king size. Well, welcome to Vermont, right? Welcome to Vermont. It's beautiful here. It is. And check out those those chairs. Wow, they're definitely one of a kind. Good morning, everyone. Folks, we are checking out. The bed was super comfy. Uh, they had a little bonfire out last night, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any video of that, though. They also have a little, little pond over here, too, with a gazebo. Really cool. So we're going to check out, and we're going to visit, and we're going to explore more of Vermont today. We're going to do more back road type stuff. And then hopefully we'll end up in New Hampshire by the end of the day. Dawn, are you ready? ready. Yep. Let's do this. Let's do it. Oh, there's a little gazebo out next to pretty little pond it's picture perfect isn't it mm -hmm. huh. oh, fun little place there are a lot of birds are chirping could even be a moose out there who knows we never know we haven't seen a moose yet. No, I want to, though. <laughs> you can hear the church bells. The Vermont Ski and Snowboard Museum. Unfortunately, they're closed today. I really don't know much about skiing and snowboarding. Younger, we I attempted a few times. I wouldn't say I was the best at it. <laughs> uh, but we're, and I also learned that this is where Ski Patrol started. Who would have known, right? So we're gonna take a look at this, this top 10 small town America looks like. Stowe was settled in 1794. Uh, this is a very busy intersection here. It's just a four-way stop. And that's a very unique little building there. I always, always working on gardens around here, I notice. And take a look at that house over there. Yeah, that's, I wouldn't mind living in that one. Beautiful plantings everywhere. And this here is the Green Mountain Inn. It's been here since 1833. They say they have a swimming pool and they have breakfast here. The Green Mountain Inn. You know, kind of reminds me a little bit, like I keep getting these, you know, white Christmas, you know, Vermont in my head. And it's the way I picture Vermont being, even though everything was filmed on a sound stage in California for that movie, but it's just kind of kind of way you, you picture it. It's gonna be another hot one today. It's nine o'clock in the morning, and we're almost hitting 70 degrees. Very muggy, also. Uh, 
that that old inn crosses right over this roadway here and into the building next to it and this is what I come down here mostly for Shaw's General Store established in 1895 Oh, and I love old general stores. Yeah, I haven't seen any moose around here. Yeah, they have emergency beards, Don, in three different colors in case you gotta hide, right? They also have six mustaches to match. Oh boy, they got ginger, yes. black, and brown. <laughs> <laughs> we should get a box of them and wear it around. Oh, wow, you can... Yeah, eleven dollars, or you can be Magnum PI. Yeah, Eight fifty for the mustaches. Oh, I bet you it's absolutely beautiful during the fall time. One of the locals was telling me if you come here during the fall, you want to book your hotel at least six months or further in advance because it will be totally sold out. I don't think we've made that that six month mark. Ooh, another. A box of jokes. Doggy poo. Well, the eyeball. Dog poop. Fake <laughs> vomit. Ew, gross. Hand buzzer and ugly teeth. That looks like plankton off of um, SpongeBob. <laughs> it does. This. this one's plankton. Oh yeah. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, they got some really cool teas also. Very nice teas. I kind of like this one here myself. Yeah, so that sled up there was used in the 1981 movie Four Seasons with Carol Burnett. That was all filmed right here in Stowe. And if these floors could talk, imagine the stories they would tell. Yeah, so if you're looking for a home in the area, they start around 850000 and one and a half to two million dollars. Now this one here is fifteen million. But yeah, about about two million dollars will get you a nice little house here. So about two million dollars will get you a house here. I don't know if this one's a two million or a six million, but it's uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? And uh, there's a lot of Victorian and craftsman style homes throughout the whole town. And it's a lot of tourists here. I noticed there's a lot of Florida plates, California. So folks are coming, North Carolina. Yeah, folks are coming from all over to visit. Oh my goodness, look at this home. Built in 1850. Everybody's out enjoying the day and Do you remember on PBS there was that show called This Old House? And a lot of their episodes were like up in this area, like, you know, Vermont, Massachusetts. And this kind of reminds me of some of the places they'd be working on. Norm Abram, you know Norm Abram. No, I Yankee didn't Carpenter. Watch a lot of in did, did you watch Sesame Street? Yeah. It came on right after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you seen the show? And that's when we turned it off the TV and go outside and play. <laughs> go outside, <laughs> turn the TV off, go outside and play, huh? And the church is open. Take a peek. I got Vermont cheeses, craft beers, wines. And we drove by here last night. This place was hopping. Everybody had a cold one sitting out here enjoying themselves. Uh, probably from a long day of biking and hiking and there we go, an old Volkswagen K9. 
camper. That's what we need, Don. Yeah. Travel the United States. It's cute, convenient. Do it in style. My goodness look at the view with that little that little barn there wow and that's a sign we like to see a one-lane bridge oh wow yeah, it's uh So it says speed limit horses at a walk, motor vehicles 10 miles per hour. Rushes right underneath it. So that was Goldbrook Covered Bridge. Yeah, it's very nice. And the cool thing about this area, like Vermont and uh, New Hampshire, is a lot of covered bridges. So all these covered bridges are down dirt roads. Don's like, maybe we'll run into a moose. I'm hoping. <laughs> you never know. Fingers right? crossed. Yeah, this would be the place to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely gorgeous through here. Yeah. I'm just loving it. And there it is. It's a red covered bridge. Yeah, so this one's the red covered bridge. Oh boy, that water really does rush. Yeah, just like the bridges, we always see these nuts and bolts with these anchors on the majority of these old wooden bridges. So there's 12 other bridges in this county, and it gives you the, uh, go to vermontbridges.com. It's just beautiful through here. I just love it. The cover yeah. bridges, the w rushing water. So there's 12 of them in this county. I don't know if we'll get to all of them because we're kind of heading towards New Hampshire, but you could probably make a week out of it just going around visiting bridges and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're heading to Moss Glen Falls. So it looks like we're gonna hike in about a quarter of a mile. So about half mile round trip. Oh, there's some beavers. I have to keep an eye open for, for some beavers. Okay, well let's, wow, this is a very interesting pipe path here. You gotta walk on this little boardwalk here. Ah, and this is a little 
path here. And I can hear bullfrogs too. Oh wow, look at the, the scenery. Well, it's kind of a swampy area. And oh, well, there's a big old snake just went that way. What? Yeah, there was. Where? Those pesky beavers are at it again. They're chopping down trees all over here. I've hiked all different types of trails, and this is the first time I've hiked something like this. There's water all around, too. Cherries. Hey, Dawn, I think those are choke cherries. Yeah, I wouldn't want to eat them. <laughs> I recommend people eat them. A lot of nature, you know? Here's, you can tell the beavers have been doing their thing. You know, this looks like a place you might run into Bigfoot. You know that? Or a, or a moose or something. Or a moose, right? <laughs> hey, Bigfoot, right? Yeah, there's a lot, and there's folks, and it's it's muggy out here, it's super. Heck. It's got to be like 99% humidity. But I just got a blast of cool air, which means the falls has got to be. Don't you feel it getting cooler? Yes. I do. Yeah, this has been a great little hike. I absolutely love it. Revegetation area. Oh wow, I can feel that cool breeze. Oh, and it just hits you in the chest, you know? <laughs> Reminds you of the Smokies, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and we gotta go up there to see the waterfall. My goodness, look at that. Glen Moss Falls. Wow. Stay on trail, dangerous drop off. Yeah, I would say that is pretty, pretty dangerous. At the top, there's a, a waterfall, and then there's a pool. Then there's a second tier here coming down the side. It's amazing, it's just beautiful. It is. It goes all the way up and shoots down. Definitely worth the hike. It's not, yeah. it's not yeah. far, it's not far at all. There is an incline. You do feel like you're in the Great Smoky Mountains or something here. The air is cooler up here. Yeah, so it's being such a humid day, it feels good. Very nice falls, isn't yeah, it? Wow. Beautiful. It was worth the hike. And there was wildflowers all the way. And I absolutely love like you're walking on top of the swamp, which was cool. But it, it makes for a muggy hike too. That you know that would be a beautiful view that that smoke from those Canadian wildfires are are really covering up the mountain views kind of a shame <laughs> you know there's a lot of really nice barns we've been seeing along the way 
heading to a town called Morristown. They definitely have some unique barns. Well, this once was a covered bridge and it's it's gone. They must have took it out. Huh. It showed it as a covered bridge on the map. Maybe they're going to rebuild it or something. So this cover bridge is really unique. This one's for trains. Or it was at one time. Now I think it's a biking path. Wow, this one is super tall. But I guess it would have to be, right? Yeah, and that's the the train tracks. This one here is just amazing on, on the height. Mm -hmm. And I, I like how the woodwork, it's kind of like a lattice. And they use these wooden, um, you know, like wooden dowel rods. Of, Hold it together. So they they just recently had some major flood, major rains here. We're just outside of Hardwick. And there's actually, we've seen cars down in the, in the, we've seen cars down in the, um, in the river. It washed cars down there. And of course the road here washed out right here. And, um, wow. And that, you know, that covered bridge that was, wasn't there, that probably had washed out. That was just the frame that was left. You know that? Maybe. And then there was a hotel back there. It was it was totally like been washed out too. So this was an old early settler road called Bailey Hazen Military Road. Yeah. Founded in 1786. There's supposed to be a covered bridge about a mile down it. It looks real primitive though. It was an original road founded back in 1786. It's a one laner. I hope the heck there's no cars coming coming our way. But we are getting off the main roads, aren't we? Oh yeah, we're on the back boonies. In search of covered bridges and waterfalls. Okay, so we should have brought the Jeep for this. <laughs> oh, this one you can only see from a distance. It's on private property. It's very pretty though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It has nice views too. Yeah, the mountains and stuff. So it's the AM Foster Bridge. It says dangerously deep water. Please stay back from bridge and do not drive surrounded farmland on the surrounded farmland. That would be a beautiful view if it wasn't for the, the those Canadian wildfires. Yeah, so there was a passerby and they said the owner is okay with you walking up to it. They just want you to stay on the other side of this fence here and uh, be respectful. That's an amazing bridge.
Wow, it's a it's a perfect bridge. Picture perfect. Look at all the dragonflies. Yeah, hundreds of them. Uh, 1830 and 1914. So I wonder if it was used between 1830 and 1914. And Foster Bridge is the inventor of the Foster Sap Spout. Oh wow! So this the guy who who owned this or the this little town that's here is named after the guy who who created the sap spout. You know, that's for, like, harvesting maple syrup. Maple syrup. I thought I'd seen a bucket in a tree back uh, miles, of, miles away. Yeah, learning a little bit of history every day. And there's a little schoolhouse over there we'll take a look at real quick. Well, it's an old schoolhouse. Cabot, Vermont. That's a picture-perfect barn. Cabot Plains Farm. I wonder, wonder why they have all the windows. Must be a reason for all the windows. It's got a newer garage door on it, but... Oh, that's cool. Oh, that barn over there is amazing also. Another schoolhouse, 1929. Somebody has converted into their home. Welcome to New Hampshire. Sure, live free or die. This is the Carl Memorial Bandstand, dedicated to the men who lost their lives in service of their country in July 1976. And that's the Twin Mountains. I don't know how you get the twin. Well, there's a mountain back there, and then there's a mountain there, and then there's some mountains over here, and there. They're kind of smoggy, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we have, we're here. we're here. First time in New Hampshire, beautiful state, just like Vermont. In fact, I think they're very similar when it comes to like the mountains and, and other things, but. Crawford Depot was built in 18, 91. This train station is awesome. It's Crawford's Train Depot. And we're here in the White Mountains. Beautiful. It's almost like Bigfoot's going to come out and, you know what I mean, on the edge of the woods there and wave to you. Waving. waving on does he ride on top of mooses? No, but I want one. I want to see one. The White Mountains are absolutely amazing. And this is part of the Appalachian that stretch all the way down to this down to Tennessee, gorgeous. yeah. It is. It'd be perfect if there's a moose swimming around in there. The bridge goes to nowhere. <laughs> I just want to go to Moose Bigfoot territory. Steep winding roads, the next one and a half miles. Crawford's Notch State Park. Well, look at the train. It just kind of goes into the mountains. That is awesome. Yeah, all the train tracks? Yeah. That is just amazing. It 
it is. It goes right up in there. Wow. Oh wow, this is a 13% grade. Grade. I'm amazed. Oh my goodness. This is like one of the tallest waterfalls I've ever seen. That waterfall is called Silver Cascades and it's literally on the side of the road. And it's probably one of the most impressive waterfalls I've seen in a while. It, it's gotta be a couple hundred feet high. Thank you so much for watching our adventures today in Vermont. And tomorrow, well, more New Hampshire. We love you, and we'll see you guys in the next video.